Take a close look at this cable real quick. Probably looks a little different than what you're used to seeing, right? Well, that's because this is the new USB standard, USB-C. It comes with all the usual perks of a new generation of this kind of technology. It can charge things faster, it can transfer data faster, it can do audio and video better. But for being honest, what probably 99% of people are going to care about is it's reversible. In fact, a true USB-C cable is actually reversible on both ends with identical ports on each end. Which means, yeah, finally, no more fumbling around to see which side is up. Kind of makes you wonder what took so long. Now, the only problem with this is that it's such a new technology, so not many products actually support USB-C yet. They use USB-A because that's been the standard for quite some time. So now you're sitting here thinking to yourself, self, how am I going to charge this shiny new gadget that uses USB-C? Well, that's where USB-A to USB-C cables come in handy, just like this one here from iOrange. I mean, it's a cable, you know, it plugs in where you normally plug things into and does what other cables normally do. In fact, the only reason this video exists in the first place is because there's a bit of a problem with these cables right now. Not all of them are created equally. Or specifically, not all of them are created to the USB-C standard. Now, I'm not an electrical engineer, so I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I am, but thankfully there is one from Google who's gone through a few of the popular cables on Amazon right now, and he's been testing them to see if they're compliant with the standard. I'll leave a link to his reviewer profile in the description. So basically, in a nutshell, a cable that's not up to spec is going to try and pull more power than it's capable of holding, meaning there's a definite possibility of frying the cable, or frying the power source, or whatever it was you were trying to charge. Thankfully, this cable not only meets the spec, but is honestly probably the nicest quality cable I think I've ever seen, which is really weird to say. I mean, it's just a cable, you know? It has a nice heft to it, it's 2 meters, or about 6 feet long, so it'll reach, I hope, anywhere you need it to go, and it does what it's supposed to do without the fear of melting your phone, or steel beams. The only downside to this cable is iOrange capitalized on the publicity and they raised their price per cable from about 13 bucks when I got it at to around 20 as of now. Now, with that in mind, if you're looking for a cable like this right now, you don't have a whole lot of choice at the moment. There's only three or four quality cables that you should bother spending your money on. Welcome to the struggle of being an early adopter. So if you do need a cable like this and you don't want your gadgets to catch on fire, this one from iOrange should suit you pretty well. And given the build quality, at least it makes you feel like you're getting your money's worth. That's all for this video, pretty short and sweet. Like I said, I'm not an electrical engineer. I do not have the equipment to test it, but I'm actually going to get some just because I think this is an interesting topic to kind of talk about here. Thumbs up if you want to see that. Either way, I'm going to do it because I want to do it. But yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, definitely subscribe if you're interested in this kind of stuff that I make. And if you're going to stick around, I'll see you in the next video.